Today Sheila and I are going to make fabric pine cones that you can hang in your Christmas tree and a hook on the back of a door maybe or on the wall take a picture of and hang a couple of these up Christmas time it looks they look really nice this one here this is the, the style we're making today with this type of pattern all right so for this you're going to need I'll put that over there you're going to need a polystyrene egg you could use a ball shape either mm -hmm. but we'll use an egg today you're going to use some fabric squares these are two inch squares and there's about 30 of each color we have two i have two contrasting colors red and green and you have cream and red and red for yeah. yours all right so to start yeah we also need some sequins and bead pins these are small pins you can use ordinary straight pins if you want to but these are smaller they're about three quarters of an mm -hmm. inch i suppose and there's lots and lots in a packet of them so you'll be able to make more than one of these. It takes quite a while to do this, but I, I like it, it's quite therapeutic. To finish off, you're also going to need a ribbon and a nice pearl-headed pin for decoration. Okay, so hold your egg pointy side up and then get one of your pieces of fabric, doesn't matter which color, place it over the top and place your thumb on the top of it. It doesn't matter if it's not completely centered because most of it will be covered later. Get one of your pins and push it right in just above the corner and then go straight across do the same there and then do the other two sides and one more okay and it's like giving them a little hat the side and then I have my little top on great now, try and figure out where the very centre is and push a pin in. If you turn it around like that, you, you might find the centre. It's a little bit hard to find it sometimes. And push it in so that it's sticking up a little bit. This is a guide pin, it'll come out later on. Have you done that? I have. No. Just get it in the centre now. Great. Now, get your contrasting colour and fold it diagonally mm -hmm. once and again. All right, and then sort of press it with your fingers a little bit. Okay. And as you'll see, you'll have a fold on one side. So this is gonna happen with each and every one that we fold. So try and keep your fold always to the right or always to the left, and that'll make for a more uniform okay. look. Now, place this so that the top of it is just touching the guide pin. And get your little pins and put one in each of the bottom two corners. You don't need one at the top. That's it. And then you get another one. Fold it. We go the same color, Maria, or yeah, same color. Same color. Four. We're going to use four now of the same color. And then you go directly opposite with this one. When you're doing this, it's always better to always work on opposites because the pattern is less less likely to be skewed. It, it's easier to keep the straight lines. Same thing again. Pin in. pin in there as well. It's going to be a little bit hard to push the pin in at times. Yeah, I have a thimble here beside me. If you, if you oh, need okay. to, you can use that. It's going to be hard on the fingers. Do the same again with the third one. Go exactly in between the first two. Make sure it's just touching the guide pin. It'll overlap slightly, so you have quite a few layers of fabric to go through here. So depending on the fabric, nice to have a light cotton fabric uh, it's easier to push it through so you can, sometimes you might even go outside of the last one so that you only have four layers of fabric to push through rather than eight and then you do the same with the last one. Go to the pin and pin this is basically what we're going to be doing the whole way down but I will show you a few more just so we get the, the pattern going. We want a nice stripy pattern going down the side of it. Now this one's a bit hard to push in so I'm just going to use that to help push it through. Okay. Just this one goes That's in great. here. Now when you finish that take the, 
the other color, that you, the one you just didn't use. Roll the red, make a fold again, squish it a bit. Now we're going to, you see there's like a, a top and a valley. You go in the valley between the last two. Okay. About the width of your little finger, down. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And same thing again, put a pin in each bottom corner. Show me that one. Should I be up yeah. nearer? No, no, not nearer. I was going to think. Down, no, that, that's perfect. That's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. And then again, you're going to put four on. So fold your second one. You can take your time, Sheila. That's, that's okay. No problem at all. And I'm going to do, go directly opposite again. Down a little bit, about a centimeter. Pin in each corner. And there. Don't worry if it looks a bit scraggly here because that's been covered by the next layer. Fold again. In between. And my fourth one. Now for the next row, you're going to see a pattern forming. So I go back to my greens, give it a fold, and I go directly in line with the top of the last one, so that goes down. Okay. So again you measure just a little, little bit lower than the last one you put on. So now you're going to start creating the lines in the pattern. As you can see, that's covering the bits from the previous mm -hmm. layer. So you would put four, four every time you would put four of the same color around. And it's good to check sometimes as well that your lines are straight. If you hold your egg towards you like that, you can see mm -hmm. You can see that it's going right. Yeah. You know, it's a straight line. And also, you can check on the circumference around here. That needs to be in a straight line as well. And then you know oh, you're yes, going to end yes, up with a nice yes. pattern. So, if you want to keep going with yours, I will. Um, this is very I, relaxing. It is. Yeah, it's quite therapeutic. You can see on this one here now that the the pattern goes right down to the bottom. See that? Lovely. You have the red. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you how to what to do when you get to the bottom. So this is one here. There's about an inch of white left at the bottom. So what you would do then, and we take one of your squares, there's one here, and you'd fold in the edges, just a little bit, and then run your fingers along it. If you're very pedantic, you could actually iron them you down, could, but you don't to have keep to, it you don't have to. So you fold all those in, and then you just place it across the bottom. And put a pin in each corner. This is where you really might need the thimble Save the but fingers. Yeah, you're, go, you're going through quite a lot of layers of fabric when you're putting this in. There are holes in your fingers. Yes. Okay, one, two. Three and four. And I always put Eight and I put one in the middle of each side just to make sure it's really secure and mm. it can't come apart. This whole thing it will take quite a long time to do the whole, you know, to start finish. Yeah, and well, finish. you get faster and faster. You can I could make one in less than a half an hour, but usually people they take nearly an hour to do the yeah. first time. But there's no rush. Okay, so that's the bottom on. All the fabric is on now. We're gonna put a rosette on it. A bow. So I'm gonna put one. Two. These pins are sticking up. Three and four pins, one in each corner. Then I'm going to get my ribbon, pull out a bit. As 
It's a bit frayed there, so I cut off the edge first at the end. Now, put it just past across the middle, loop it round one of the pins, gather it, gather it under your finger. You're making a figure of eight basically. So that's all in under your thumb there. And put a pin in there. And just cut it. Then go across here. You could make, if you put six pins in instead of four, you'd have a um, more substantial bow. Then again, put your pin in. And then measure what size you want to loop. That thing. Cut off the ribbon. Now I can use these pins that are already in the sides because they're going to come out anyway. I'm going to put two of them diagonally in, one going across that way and one going across the other way to anchor the bow so they can't slip out. Take out all your extra pins and if your pin is still stuck in the other end just pull that out as well. Now to finish it off I've got little stars here. These were confetti for weddings so they, they cost very little. They, they do perfectly well for this and I have some long pins with pearl heads on them or gold heads so I've just threaded a star onto my pin and then we place the bottom of the pin in the center try and wiggle it in it can be sometimes it can be a little bit difficult because there's so many pins in there and press it right down and it's nice nice glittery top on it there so that's your decoration finished it is a very therapeutic pastime. It is, isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah. It's lovely actually doing yeah. it. You I'm know. going to show you a couple of different patterns you can make. This one is made fluff on it. Uh, this one is made using lots and lots of different colours, and it, I think that's a great effect as well. You could make it so that the pattern goes in circles around the centre, like like that way, uh, by putting instead of putting four one colour and four another one, put the first four and the second four with the same colour and then the third and fourth in a different colour and that way your pattern is going to go round the circumference instead, which is quite nice too. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another one here, there's only four fields, green, red, green, red, so it's just slightly larger bands. So use your imagination, try different things and I think <laughs> you will enjoy doing this, it's a nice project. Happy Christmas. Take care now. Bye.